Hello, hello, beautiful people. Uh, welcome. My name is Mel, and I hope you saw part one of this video. If you didn't, the link is down below in the description box. So first of all, I pull out my notes and I just start going at it about all the things that I have learned in my dating journey. So the first part one of the video, all of the lessons that I have learned in the past 14 years about what not to do while dating part two this part of the video i'll be talking about the things that i have learned to do throughout this dating journey these are the most 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 important things this is literally the only dating advice that you'll ever need as a woman to thrive in your dating life and to attract and entertain the type of dates and the type of men that you want to experience the type of way that you want to be dated we're not taught in school like how to date and how to become like that healthy partner or how to communicate and things like that so i was really excited to create these videos because i didn't have that guidance so i compiled this this list of things together about the very most important things because I've learned them and they have really helped me to transform my dating journey and the type of men that I attracted and entertained and started to date. Hopefully you'll find at least one thing in this video that resonates with you or that you can put into practice for the up-levelment <laughs> to up-level your dating journey. I learned the hard way so that you didn't have to. <laughs> and some people don't learn these lessons like they'll go throughout their entire lives and they'll still keep doing the same things and not quite know why so you're ahead of the game you know you're ahead of the game in your dating journey just for the simple fact of you clicking on this video and watching this video no particular order but this is like the main thing you want to do before you even put yourself out there before you even consider dating before you even set up a dating profile or whatever it is that you that you do you know to get your dating prospects but before you decide to date i learned that it's so important to establish what do you want what do you want just establishing in my mind like some type of intention behind dating has really helped me to go into dating with this in the back of my mind it helps to guide my dating journey in a sense because i'm not just like out there all willy-nilly like oh okay yeah whatever happens happens if your dating intention is literally just to have fun or to meet new people or to go on dates <laughs> or to eat free food like i don't know i'm not judging but if your dating intention is literally to just be casual or whatever it is that you want then just just going out there with some type of intention, I found for me like that was really helpful. I had something to guide me as I was choosing who and what I wanted to entertain and interact with. So whatever floats your boat, just picking an intention and checking in with yourself as you're going through your dating journey to see if that intention still aligns with what you want. You know, a person might surprise you and turn out to be the person that you been looking for your entire life so if your intention turns from just dating casually to you know get married to this person and they're expressing that they want to marry you or whatever it is that you aspire to have then just checking in with yourself and and changing your dating intention as you see fit because it's your life it's your world it's your world setting the intention i feel like it makes everybody's life easier it makes your life easier because you know what you want, right? You go into it knowing what you want and it makes the other person's life easier as well because it's like a guiding force. So you you know what you want, you know what you don't want, you know what's going on, you know? You're not just showing up like, uh, I'm here. You know how they say standing for nothing is how you fall for anything? It kind of reminds me of that because if you are not solid in what it is that you want to experience from this dating experience that you're going into and it's kind of like you're just up for grabs <laughs> it's kind of just like uh i've been learning that it's been helpful to have that intention but to also be open to the universe surprising me in ways that i couldn't even fathom some good ways keep your dating goals in mind or your dating intentions in mind but still have fun still allow yourself to go with the flow and just allow yourself to um readjust or reinvent set new intentions as you see fit Ooh, 
That's a good one. So the next one is do establish dating boundaries and non-negotiables before you put yourself out there. So just having in mind like some red flags that are an absolute no-no for you, some non-negotiables that don't align with what it is that you want. Like for me, my man has to be respectful. He has to be a healthy communicator. He has to be mature. So just kind of seeing what type of values, what type of characteristics you want or you need in a partner in order for you to thrive and to have this healthy communication. That is so important before putting yourself out there. So having that before you go out there and then making sure you stick with them making sure you stick with your boundaries and your non-negotiables because when you don't this is you going against promises essentially that you have made to yourself because it's like oh i you know i established that i want this or i'm not going to tolerate this so you really have to build up that trust for yourself by continuing to honor your desires and honor the things that you said are non-negotiables like stick with it (laughs) stick with it you know and I heard this quote from this woman who said because sometimes we're taught that boundaries like are like a hard border or like keep people out in some type of way but she said that boundaries actually teach people how to grow with you and I loved this because it's not like a boundary of keeping somebody out But it's a boundary to tell people like, look, this is something that I need in order to feel fulfilled or in order to feel whatever. If they choose to align with that, then great. But if they don't choose to align with that, you have to remember to kill the urge to be chosen and choose yourself. Choose yourself, girl. And I feel like the non-negotiables definitely help me to protect myself from things that I don't want. So if someone is clearly showing me a non-negotiable, then that's an easy disqualification because I choose me. If you stick to your boundaries, you stick to your non-negotiables and you disqualify, like if you see red flags. If you do this one thing alone, like you can save yourself years and years, years on top of years of dating people who don't align with you in the best ways possible. I heard... uh. Pastor R.C. Blakes, I was listening to something that he said, and basically he was he was talking about how a lot of women are becoming married to and having kids with these men who didn't even deserve a conversation with them. But they're just ignoring their their intuition and they're ignoring like these things that they really desire and going against what their promises to themselves and choosing these men instead. You got to you got to be smart, smart, be open. But still have your boundaries, still respect yourself and still put your desires first. It don't matter if people tell you that you you dreaming too much or you too picky or blah, blah, blah. Like, no, don't let that in. <laughs> you could be picky. You could be picky. But your man will come like just stay true to who you are. Stay true to what you want, what you your goals and your dreams and that dream partner. And you can absolutely have what you want. But just being true to yourself is really all that matters in this situation. Ooh, so my next one. Well, be aware of what a placeholder is and exit if you do not want to be one, if you don't want to be a placeholder. So I learned about the concept of being a placeholder when I was a placeholder. <laughs> I was in this relationship and it was a guy who was like future faking and just doing all these things and he didn't know what he wanted. But we was in this relationship and I started listening to, I forget the guy's name, but it's this guy, he talks about like Spartans and being a unicorn, the unicorn delusion, I think was one of his audiobooks. But I started listening to him and all the things he was saying aligned with the situation that I was in at that time. And I was just having this realization like, oh my gosh, I'm a placeholder. <laughs> So a placeholder is basically a woman who does everything like all the wifely duties for a man and like builds a man up and does all these things. Any man who's unsure about what he wants, but he keeps you around anyway, that's giving big placeholder energy. Any man who's unsure, but he's just like, 
you know, one foot in, one foot out, but he's willingly accepting or reaping the benefits of what you are giving. Placeholder energy, your placeholder energy. In the other video, I mentioned the analogy about like, why buy the cow when you can have the milk for free? So if you are treating this man like a husband, right? You, you're giving him your goodies, cooking him home cooked meals, doing all these wifely things and your girlfriend's status, but he don't know what he want and he's just keeping you around this given placeholder energy people love free <laughs> that's what i wrote in my notes because they do and of course if somebody is gifting you with all this fabulousness and all this life force energy and these amazing meals or like these great benefits you know if you're half ass in a job but you're still getting all the benefits full benefits from day one with no probationary period no nothing wouldn't you take those benefits? But just think of that analogy because that's essentially what's happening here. He's getting all the goods and all the benefits of you doing these wifely duties for free because you're not a wife. So that that was just like, phew, that blew my mind for sure. Oh, so my next one is you must, must, must pay attention to his actions. Actions are law. Actions are law. Say it with me. Actions are our law it don't matter what he's saying if his actions and his words don't align it does not matter what he's saying if his actions and his words don't align okay so personally for me like in my experiences actions have always been more important than words because anybody can give lip service anybody can promise you or tell you they want to do this with you or that with you but you really have to go by his actions first do his actions align with his words? Are they even in the same family? Does it like, you got to make it make sense. In the past, I dealt with men who I stayed in relationships with longer than I should have because I was going off of hope, going off of his promises, going off of what he said versus what he was showing me in the moment, moment to moment, like clear, clear cut, clear cut clear as day evidence that his actions did not align with his words pay attention ladies that's important it's okay to dream together and to have hopes and to you know for your man of course you want your man to talk about the future with you because he better but are his actions aligning with his words does he actually show you that he cares about you does he show you that he wants you in the future like is he giving long-term energy is he committing to you you know you like you have to you got to think about these things <laughs> Because I wasn't thinking about these things. I was that. I was not thinking about these things. I wasn't. Do, 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 do. Do date more than one man at a time. Please. Please. Do rotational date. Do rotational, circular, whatever you want to call it. Date more than one man at a time. If you are somebody who feels like you always put all your eggs in one basket, you know, like I was, or if you feel like you're somebody who always just doing the most and just becoming a wife <laughs> quickly and just doing, you know, just doing too much. <laughs> if you think, if you find yourself being codependent or any of these things, I <laughs> just listen, <laughs> listen, Linda, <laughs> rotational dating and dating more than one man at a time is so key this has been such an eye opener for me a missing piece to the puzzle of all the past situations that i would find myself in rotational dating dating more than one man at a time it literally solves all the the problems that i used to have when dating and just giving too much and like doing the most and doing all these things because now you know you're not in a scarcity mindset i used to think oh is he the one is he my husband is he this is he that and just try to fit this guy into this piece when he ain't had no business being there so i like to use the analogy i was journaling one day and i was just talking about this and i was like it's as if i'm trying to what it's like when you're trying to date a person and make them into that ideal man when they're clearly giving you evidence that they're not that person for you you know they're not your ideal person that's like taking a puzzle piece from a completely different puzzle 
right? Completely different puzzle that ain't got no business being in your puzzle box and just trying to cram it in and make it fit into your puzzle when it don't, it don't even belong in your puzzle. So, <laughs> so this is like rotational dating is huge to find out how you like to be dated. Like what type of men do you like to date? How do you want to be treated as you're dated? What type of chivalry do you want to experience and really putting yourself out there to experience these different I thought my thing stopped recording to experience these different types of men and just to discover like what type of man is is best for you and for what you desire. Like I said, this keeps you out of the scarcity mindset and it keeps you thinking abundantly. Like there are an abundance of men who want to date me, who want to sh treat me, who want to be chivalrous towards me, who want to be romantic versus you trying to force this one little dusty boy who... <laughs> who probably don't got no business having a conversation with you to be that, to be everything. Rotational dating or circular dating, whatever you want to call it, is really key because this keeps your your energy and your interest and your, your curiosity in different places. And you can decide like what you want, what goal, what your goal is for rotational dating. I know for me personally, my goal is to rotational date for marriage like that is my intention to date for marriage so you have to fi figure out and just feel what feels best for you are you rotational dating to be in a long-term committed relationship you know what are your goals so that's who girl that's huge but just pouring everything into one person who hasn't even fully committed to you it just it just don't make sense. It used to make sense to me, but it, the math don't math. <laughs> it does not math. And when you do that, you're like, you're stopping yourself from, you're blocking your potential blessings from possible men who actually can give you what it is that you need and desire. Okay. But by keeping your options open, you can, you can date, you can, you can learn more about yourself. You can grow. You know, this is a, ve a very healing experience as well. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. I used to make excuses and be like, oh, I'm, I only want to date one person at a time. I can only focus on one and whatever limited beliefs or like excuses that I had created because I was, you know, out of fear. But no, I feel like dating, rotational dating for me is what will get me to my husband it's what will show me options and it'll clarify what I want even more because I have these different dating experiences to compare so this next one is so juicy this next one is do date like you are the prize because you are the prize sis you are say it with me I am the prize I am the prize. I am the prize. I am the prize. Date as if you're the prize. Know that you're the prize and you are worthy and act accordingly. Please do not put these men on pedestals. Allow men to pursue you. Allow men to take the lead. Leave the space for him to lead you. Leave the space for him to pursue you so that you can see how he operates. And if he even is a pursuer or a leader, you know, if that's something that you want or that's something that you crave or desire long term. Because I know for me, it, it started to become tiring leading and going 50 50 and just doing all these things that just didn't align with my spirit but I didn't know back then because I didn't know myself but just allow him to be a man allow him to show up for you allow him to pursue you and to pursue the prize because you are the prize baby you are the prize okay even when it comes to like conversations and dates like allow him to come up with these things he can get your input and all that type of stuff but especially in the beginning like allow him to show up for you like just rest in your femininity and allow him to show up allow him to lead these conversations yes interact with him of course and engage in these conversations and engage in your dates and things like that but let him lead see see where he takes you because now you can see like what his character is you can see what type of leader he is it shows you the type of man that he is i learned that there's really a correlation between a man knowing you know, how to lead or where he's going in terms of his dating life and how to lead women and, you know, have that masculine energy is a correlation between that. And you'll be able to see, does he even lead his own life? Is he a leader? 
you can get some real intel about if he'll lead you just by looking at his life and looking at you know what he wants and what his vision is and things like that you want to see where he's going in life and if you even want to go to that place with him i heard this guy say the most important thing when you're considering marrying somebody is not asking like oh do you love me or how much do you love me but it's, it's actually where are we going like <laughs> where are we going where are you leading us to do i want to be a part of that so that is very important know that you are the prize act accordingly let him lead do not put him on a pedestal and see if you even want to be led to where he's leading you to the next one is to allow yourself to trust allow yourself to trust him please 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 if you were done dirty in the past and there were men who made it hard for you to trust them you you have to put that aside you have to give each man a clean slate that you're dating unless 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 he gives you a reason to to do otherwise like unless he gives you a reason to not trust him you have to give him a clean slate clean slate based on him and not past experiences because when you go in with this guard up and just not trusting people you're going to push them away like you're going to self-sabotage and it's just it's just not good to feel just think about a time where where you felt like you weren't trusted but you had like the best intentions or great intentions and somebody just was like mm, you know it's not <laughs> it's not a good feeling so if you you have to give these men a clean slate with trust if you want to give yourself a chance at love Ooh, this is a good one oh girl all these is good <laughs> all these are good next one is to learn to embrace being single this was a huge lesson for me the most important thing i learned about this whole single journey is that if you're afraid to be alone in any capacity you have to face that fear you have to face it head on like you have to choose to be alone choose to face that fear choose it choose it choose it so if you're dating and you're like staying in these relationships past their expiration date and you're just going along with the okie doke and going along with whatever because you're afraid to be by yourself as a living testimony i'll tell you that being alone and being in your own company and learning to really be with you and to learn you is a thousand times better than being with someone who you, you, you don't have any business being with being with someone who doesn't really align with what it is that you want because you know the more you do that the further you are going away from yourself and that's why a lot of times people wake up and it's like 10 years down the line and they just don't know themselves and they don't they can't seem to find out when it was that they lost themselves in this relationship that been expired so you got to stop running from being single, babe. Like you really have to just face it. And it's such a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful gift once you learn to actually be by yourself. I made a video about how to be happy single. Um, I'm going to try to put that right here if it works out. But if not, I'll try to link it down below. Um, but yeah, I made a video about how I learned how to be happy single and you can too, you can too, sis, because you are a prize, you are the gift, like you are a gem. Um, so you have to choose you, you have to choose to be alone for a season just to experience it. And this will protect you in the long run in your future relationships, because now that you know that being single is a gift, and now that you know that you love your alone time and your own company, you're able to exit <laughs> way quicker from situations like you're able to recognize you're able to pick up on red flags you're able to excuse yourself and just you know on to the next if this person does not align with the things that you want in your heart like your choose heart desires so now since you're not afraid to be alone and you are able to choose you because you chose you by choice you can be like up oh, this ain't for me 
let me choose me again, you know? So that that is good. That is good. This keeps you from just lingering in toxic relationships just for the hell of it. Just to say that you're in a relationship. Just to avoid being by yourself. Just think about this, right? If you don't like to be alone with you, how would anybody else? Why should anybody else? Can you really genuinely ask somebody else to enjoy your company and enjoy who you are as a person if you, number one, don't know who you are and if you don't want to face yourself enough to to bask in your own company. Just think about that. That was a lesson that I had to learn for sure. So my next one is to always, always, always listen to your intuition. Listen to that gut feeling. Even if you don't know why, even if you don't know like what what's happening, but it's just a feeling that you have. You know, it's just like a just a little voice or a little feeling that just doesn't feel right. You have to learn to honor that because that's your highest self. That's your intuition. That's your gut. Like that is God or the universe, whoever you believe in trying to guide you, you know, to safety, guide you to what it is that actually aligns with what you want in your purpose. If something feels off, then it is. If something feels off, then it is. Um, on one of my one of my girl's songs, she says, my intuition said what she said. I trust her now. Like she said what she said. I'm not going to try to fight with her or convince her. Oh, well, maybe, you know, because I know for me, I, I used to justify or like try to make excuses for certain things and just be like, um, this red flag is really like a yellow flag. So proceed with caution, but it's really a red flag and I knew better, but my intuition said what she said, so I'm going to trust her the first time, period. <laughs> like, why not? That's just you trying to protect yourself. Even if you don't know why, like your body always knows before your mind does. That's real. Your body always knows when something is off. Your body always knows before your mind catches up. Learn to also distinguish between intuition versus moving off of fear. Fear from past experiences. When I brought up the point of... um not giving him a clean slate and not trusting him, not from something that he did, but from past experiences. So you just really have to, you got to be able to distinguish and build up a relationship with your intuition so you can know what it's telling you and when to listen and it's just what it is. And what it is, yo, a what's up? So the next one is to always be yourself, share who you are authentically early on. Just be all of you. So important not to hide parts of yourself. Not even when it just comes to dating, but it's when it comes to living your life and your personal life, professional life, and just being as authentically you as you can gets you ultimately to where you're supposed to be. It gets you to the people who love you for you and who accept you and embrace you. But, you know, you have to really work on doing that for you first. So you have to work on embracing yourself, embracing your authenticity, embracing all your flaws, your quirks, your too muchness, whatever. So that way you can show up unapologetically and just be like, this is what I am. This is who I am. And if you <laughs> don't align with that, then you're not the one for me. So learning to be you and just show up as yourself is so important, especially because down the line, yourself is going to come out eventually as you're dating this person and then they might not <laughs> they might not be a a match to that down the line and they you think oh they changed up on me but really in reality you weren't being authentic you weren't being true to you in the beginning you weren't showing who you truly are so they weren't able to see that and it's like um I didn't sign up for this I learned that it's so important to be yourself and to to just tap in and not hide parts of yourself. When you share it as soon as possible with him, you'll actually gain a sense of if you're actually really compatible. Is he compatible with, does he love the true you versus the you that you are portraying or the you that you're trying to be by hiding certain parts of yourself? Dang, I got, there's a lot of these. Ooh, okay. <laughs> So this is a huge one. The next one is to learn and establish your value early on. Determine your value. <laughs> Determine your value and act accordingly. If someone does not see the value within you that you see within you, do yourself justice, exit. If they don't treat you like you are valuable, like you are precious gold, if they don't treat you how you want to be treated, and if they don't see the value that you see in yourself, they're not for you. The next one is to allow yourself to be feminine. 
Okay. If you want a man who's a provider, if you want a man to lead you, if you want a man who's in his masculine, healthy energy and all those good things, I learned that you have to learn to be feminine. Give him space to lead. So this can look like waiting by the door and not rushing to open your own doors, like your car doors or your, your restaurant doors and things like that. Give him the space to do it. Give him the opportunity to do it. Actively listen, maintain eye contact, smile. <laughs> Just allow yourself to bask in your femininity. You have to leave the space for him to be chivalrous and to show him that you truly appreciate his chivalry and show him that you truly appreciate that romantic side of him be very appreciative once he does show that to you and you allow the space i've got to experience these things and experience men like pulling out chairs and walking on the correct side of the street and opening the doors and this feel it makes you feel like a little princess and it makes them feel really good too so trust me chivalry is not dead it is alive and well and there are men out there who are willing to demonstrate that chivalry to you but you gotta allow the space for it you have to hold the space for it and bask in your feminine energy oh this next one so make sure you make dates an actual requirement no netflix and chill no coming over early on so no netflix and then chilling that for me is a privilege for me dates are an actual like that's a requirement dating Going on actual dates is a requirement. Netflix and chill can come, of course, but that's later down the line. And when you're out with him and you're going on these different dates, you can see how you guys interact with each other, how he interacts with different people. You can see a lot more if you actually make it a requirement that you are dated like a grown woman. Because you are. You deserve to be dated. You deserve all the dates, all the awesome dates. Ooh, this one. <laughs> so all of them are like really good so this one i learned that you must date for compatibility versus that initial chemistry and spark what do i mean by this do not make physical attributes in that magnetic electric chemistry like that's not the priority if you're dating with the intention to be married or to have like a healthy long-term relationship for me i learned that that is not the priority the priority is the values of this person the morals their integrity their character are they respectful can they communicate these things allow the chemistry to build between you two as you get to know each other it's physical things like physical traits we constantly change and our bodies are always changing yes i want my man to be handsome there's certain things that i need in order to be attracted to my man but for me this was just like really an eye opener so instead of dating initially off of like that intense spark or chemistry that i felt it's like no do we actually align does this man actually align with the things that i want for myself and that i want for my future what's most important for me now are the values the character you know, do we align in those ways? Because those are those are life partner things. Those are things that are actually going to keep us together and keep us growing and keep us healing and transforming together. I've seen countless and countless stories that that chemistry and that attraction that builds over time. Once you connect with a partner who is really showing you that they're for you, that they all about you, that they just love and adore you like that just makes the chemistry and that physical attraction even more juicy and magical. If you're somebody who keeps attracting toxic relationship after toxic relationship, you have to start looking at yourself. Like, what is it within you that's making you constantly attract the same type of man and a different person? Um, like, what is it within you that is craving these things or missing certain key things that or brushing over red flags like what is it within you do you have a fear of being alone do you have a lack of love for yourself like are you trying to fulfill a connection based on the love that you didn't receive as a child like there's so many things that could be possible here <laughs> that could be possibly working against you in your mind and in your belief system that you really have to do the inner work you have to do the inner work if you keep attracting certain types of men and you're not sure why do the healing so that you can improve your relationship with yourself and this will improve your relationship with every other person 
and you'll be able to see clearly because now you can see you can see yourself clearly and you can see the things that you need to work on and you can work on those things and get better and evolve and start attracting people that are more aligned with that healed version of you versus that unhealthy toxic or trauma filled version of you really learn to pour love into you and to just do things that make you feel good do things that fulfill you find out what that means find out what that looks like live a fulfilling life learn new things get out your comfort zone travel like do all these things and then when you meet up with your partner like you'll have some amazing stories to tell you'll have some great things to talk about and to connect with on a deeper level so this is the last point last but definitely not least what you want is out there okay there are is it seven billion i don't know there are billions of people in this world what you want is out there so stick to what it is that you desire stick to your standards don't don't let the outside chatter in like if people have things to say about your love life or comment about your age or how you need to find like don't let it in and stick to what stick to what you know stick to what you want stick to your truest desires have this belief that there are many many not just one but there are many potential amazing partners out there that align with everything you are and everything you want so just act accordingly and remember no desperate dating we don't do that no more. Now that you are exposed to this knowledge, to this information, to this wisdom, to these dating lessons, now that you know better, you can level up and know that what you want is out there and move accordingly. We don't desperate date. We're happy to be single until someone comes into our lives who adds just this happy vibe. I saw this quote about how I love quotes. I really love to communicate through quotes, but it was basically saying I'm content with me and like I'm happy with me. So for you to come into my life, you you got to be pretty darn awesome. You got to be pretty awesome, you know. Um, so just finding happiness within yourself will allow you to actually stick to your boundaries and stick to your desires and stick to your standards and not fall for the okie doke it'll allow you to keep that positive mindset in your dating life and to attract better and better partners that really align with you because you're not going to be desperate you're going to be happy with yourself you're going to be content you're going to be in love with yourself and your own life so whoever comes along they got to be pretty damn awesome just remember that so those are my dating lessons that I compiled over the last 14 years. That is it and that is all. I hope you're looking good, smelling good, feeling good, and being good. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.